Hey everyone, Sam Evans here and welcome to this module called Monk-like Discipline. And in this module, I'm going to show you how to get so disciplined and you know really master the art of controlling yourself. Because in business, you know, anybody can set a vision and some mission and some principles, right? It doesn't take much to sit down and, and dream up of a better future and dream of a big grand mission and quest and also state some principles that you believe are, are true and, you know, should be upheld by people trying to achieve this mission. All right, those, those are pretty easy things to do. It's another thing to do it and do it consistently and do it every day for years and actually get it done. And what it really takes, you know, what, what success really takes is relentless discipline. Discipline on a level which you cannot fathom. And in this module, I'm going to show you how you can fathom it and how you can not only fathom it, but execute it and make it a part of you. So here's what we're going to cover. Why success is the sum of your human will and then discipline and why it is the tool of the masters and then sacrifice and why you need to give everything to win. You know, there's myths that you can have it all. You know, all these gurus seem to tell you, you can have it all. You can't. You can't have it all. You know, if you're, if you're not willing to sacrifice things for your goal, then your goal will become the sacrifice. And we'll talk about that. And then focus and channeling energy into the grid. I'm going to explain what that means and how you can really work on your focus and make it superhuman. And then consistency unwavering commitment to your goal. You know, not only do we have to be focused, disciplined, not only do we have to sacrifice, but we have to be consistent with it. Every day, day in, day out, for years upon years upon years, that's what it takes. And then finally, some systems and tools so that you can stay on the rails and keep yourself in check. So why success is the sum of your human will. So where we're at at this stage of the mindset training, we've defined your vision, mission, and principles, as well as who you are right now and who you need to become to make your vision and mission become a reality. And the missing piece. So right now, we know what we want and we know who we need to become to get it. But actually executing it and seeing it through to the end, that's the hard part. That is the missing piece. And what success really is, is it's just the sum of your human will. And if you study any insanely successful person, and you'll find that the height of their suffering and pain will be equal to the height of their success. And the reason they can take this suffering and pain is due to their willpower. You know, they want something so bad that they're willing to go through hell and to get it. And they actually kind of like it. And that's what it takes to go to that next level. So what is willpower? What is human will? So it's the ability to control yourself, your impulses, and your actions. And it's strong determination that allows you to do something difficult without giving up or getting distracted. And it's basically self-control. And successful people have this on another level. This is really that superpower self-control and self-discipline. So how do we get more? How do we get more willpower? How do we get more self-control and self-discipline? Well, the first thing that really builds willpower, and it builds willpower like nothing else. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, if I want to get energized, then and if I want to get motivated, I should watch a motivational video or read a motivational book. Or, you know, I should, I should, I don't know, do a course on how to get motivated or something. This isn't how you get motivated. You know, really, it's discipline. Discipline is the most powerful thing for building energy and determination. And that's why I call it the tool of the masters. So motivation versus discipline. So most people rely on motivation to get things done, and then when it runs out, which it always does, they give up, 
and they wait for more motivation to come again. You know, they sit there and they're like, oh, I'm just waiting for my motivation to come back. You know, this is what losers do. Winners do not do this. And true masters rely on discipline, not motivation. You know, people are not motivated all the time. Pro athletes, pro businessmen, they're not motivated at all sometimes. Sometimes they're completely demotivated, but they don't stop because their discipline is what keeps them going, not their motivation. And so if you want to go to that next level, you've got to forget about motivation. I mean, if you, if you have it, awesome, use it. But if you don't have it, doesn't matter. Your discipline is what keeps you going. So self-discipline, what is it? Well, it's the ability to control your feelings and overcome your weaknesses. And it's the ability to pursue what you think is right despite temptations to abandon it. And if you really want to build self-discipline, you need to get used to delaying gratification. So the secret to self-discipline is to train yourself to think long-term and live in accordance to your long-term goals. This means you're addicted to long-term gratification, not instant gratification. So what's instant gratification? It's the desire to experience pleasure or fulfillment without delay or deferment. Basically, it's when you want it, and you want it now. So instant gratification is like, you know, I have this thought, I want to take an action, and I want to have the thought, then take the action immediately, and then receive the reward immediately. So just all instant, right? There's no long time period. So things that really get you hooked on instant gratification is social media, likes, comments, views, sugar, fast food, smoking, drugs, alcohol, Netflix, partying, socializing, gossiping, etc. All of these things are very stimulating and very immediate. So you do the action, like you, you, know, you, you drink the alcohol, you feel its effect. It's, it's instant gratification. You smoke a cigarette, you feel that rush or whatever it is that smokers feel. Or you eat that sugar or that chocolate, you feel it instantly because you you know, the sugar hits you and you also, it tastes good. And social media, you know, you just keep scrolling on that, on that news feed. Just keep pulling that lever on that slot machine. Just keep cranking it. You know, something might pop up. Something might. We don't know. It's the fact we don't know that makes it so damn addictive. Just keep cranking on that wheel. And so, really, if you want to get self-discipline, you need to practice the inverse of instant gratification. So weaning yourself off social media and all of that crap is great. And then getting yourself hooked on delayed gratification, great. That is the, that's how you start to develop steel-like discipline. So here's 11 things that you should do to develop self-discipline. And you should do all of these all the time and never stop. So number one, resist impulses. So resist all urges to eat and drink snacks throughout the day or go grab a treat or buy something or check social media, right? We have these little impulses like, oh, I just feel like a snack or, oh, I feel like a, a drink or, oh, I feel like just going out and nipping down to the store and doing that or I feel like just buying something on the internet or I feel like just checking on this group on social media or checking my posts or my comments resist those impulses. Oh, I feel like checking my email, resist. I feel like resist, just keep practicing the resistance. And then what will happen is, you know, you'll have that thought and that impulse, but instead of immediately reacting, you'll actually be, you'll actually catch yourself and you'll be like, nope, not today. You know, it's funny when people, people have trained these loops in their minds so well that when they get to their computer, they just immediately go to Facebook. Just It's just automatic. And then they arrive there and they don't even know how they got on it. And so their body is moving automatically without it even passing consciously through the mind. And that's how strong that is. So when you practice this more, you'll go to your computer and you might feel like it or you might have a thought to like go to social media, but you'll be like, no, that's not what I'm doing. It's not what I'm here to do. And then you are controlling yourself. 
not your impulses. And number two is to love pain. So a lot of people try to avoid pain, right? And I mean, we should avoid like, you know, breaking our leg, you know, that's not, that's not fun. And that's not something you should do for fun. But I'm talking about a different type of pain. Most people try to avoid this type of pain, which is, you know, if they're training hard or like physical exertion, or, you know, going to the limit where their heart's racing very fast, and, you know, their muscles are sore and tired, and they're all sweaty. Uh, but people, people avoid that sort of physical pain. They also avoid going to the dark places, so thinking about the things that are hard to think about, the places they don't want to go in their mind, or confronting difficulties, right, at work or working on a big project that's gnarly and you, you're putting it off. Like, you've got to learn to love that stuff and eat it. And every day, you need to practice taking yourself to the dark places. Just go into the gnarliest little alleys in your mind and then play around in there and be like, this is pretty... This is pretty, like, this is pretty uh, painful. But, you know what? I like it. And confront difficulties. If there's a difficulty, confront it head on. And when you feel your body kind of reacting to it, and it's getting a bit emotional, you're just feeling it, and you're like, this is good. And then feel the pain and love it. You know, I've... I've practiced working so hard that when I get tired during the day, you know, I get worn out, tired and everything, but then it's it's really weird. When I get to that real exhausted, tired pain zone, it's like that's when I find another level and I get even better. And it's because I've just practiced so much, like working hard that, you know, I, I can just keep going and I actually kind of enjoy it there. It's kind of like a nice nice place where I feel comfortable and you've got to learn to love this pain because all successful people have massive pain tolerances and people don't understand how they can tolerate it but the truth is is they actually like it in the absence of the pain they, they, they don't want that and then exercise you want to work out first thing in the morning every day regardless of whether you want to and you should love the burn so first thing in the morning is a great time to exercise. One, because you just get it out of the way, and it's something hard out of the way immediately. So as soon as you get something hard done and ticked off the list, it builds momentum for you doing other things. Also, it gets your nervous system fired up, it gets your blood flowing, it gets you know your body and mind awakened and ready to go. And then, you know, when you when you get into that exhaustion spot and your body's telling you stop, 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 don't, get off, get off, get off, just keep going. And then just listen to it and be like, man, this thing's having a skits. This thing's going nuts. It really wants me to get off. But you know what? I'm just going to keep going. And just play with it. Show it who's the boss and then kind of like it. And then it will start to lose all of its control of you. And it will just die and fade away. And that's when you start to gain self-control. This other little voice no longer really does anything. And then eat clean. So get a healthy diet plan and stick to it. And why you want to do this is that, first of all, eating better food will give you more energy. And it will also make you healthier. You will live longer. And you'll be more productive. You'll look better. Your Everything is better when you're healthy. So... There is no valid argument for not eating healthy. I mean, who would want to live shorter and live a shittier existence and look worse and feel worse and do worse work and do everything worse? Like, who would want that? It's, it makes no sense, right? So you should eat clean. And the other positive you get from this is when you wean yourself off flavor, it'll sharpen your senses in your mind. So people are so addicted to you know, all of these salts and sauces and flavors and oils and all of this crap, that every time they want to go and eat something, they expect it to be this, like, this gourmet just flavor sensation, right? And that isn't your taste buds. That's not even what you want. That's just what you've become addicted to. And when you expect such stimulation all the time, you know, stimulation is what you're trying to remove. Because then it sharpens your senses in your mind. 
It's like if you eat a lot of hot sauce, then your senses start to blunten. And, you know, you start to be able to eat more and more and more hot sauce, and you just need more of it, and it needs to be hotter. And then if you just have some hot sauce that isn't that hot, it blows your mind. I, I mean, you can't, you can't taste it at all. And this isn't good because it means that you're blunting your senses. You want to sharpen them. And that also sharpens your focus and your attention to detail and your ability to perceive things, everything. And then meditate. So you should meditate for 20 minutes every day before work and then do it religiously without ever missing a single day. And I mean this. You don't meditate if you've done it once or twice or you did it for a couple of weeks and then you didn't. It has to be done every day. Every single day. And at the same time, ritualize it. And then sleep. So sleep is self-discipline. It really is. Your sleep, the time you go to bed and the time you wake up, is really a measure of your self-discipline. Because if you make sure that you go to bed and wake up at the same time every day, you have to really police yourself. You know, you have to wake up with your alarm and, and actually do it, not snooze. And then you have to get yourself to go to bed, even if you're in the middle of watching a movie or reading a good book or whatever, you just have to do it. And so this is a really good test of your uh, self-discipline. And it also helps your body and your chemicals all balance. Because, you know, if you're going to bed and waking up at the same time, it learns. So it spikes it spikes dopamine and it spikes melatonin uh, and it spikes uh, cortisol and all of these different things at different times so that you can get sleepy at the right time and so that you can get fired up and work at the right time. And your uh, digestive system also learns when it's going to get food and how, how it's going to best digest and all of these things. Now, if you start screwing with this and changing it all around, you're just going to put yourself through chaos because, you know, your body's going to be sp like spiking uh, cortisol and you're going to be awake trying to go and then try to go to bed and you've got all this cortisol in you. Then you can't go to sleep now and it's hard for you to go to sleep. And then, you know, in the morning your body might be sp like spiking melatonin and all of that and you and it's dropping cortisol and you're not able to really function in the morning. And so it, it plays havoc with you. You need to get it on an even keel. Number seven, organization. So keep your office, house, car, drawers, desktop, email, and everything in your life clean and organized. You know, the state of your desktop uh, computer, like, of what your desktop looks like is probably the state of your mind. The state of your email inbox, state of your mind. The state of your desktop, like your actual physical desk, and then your, the state of your drawers, the state of your car, the state of your room, the state of your house. These are all pretty good reflections of your mind. So you want to keep everything organized, clean, and get rid of clutter. Not only is it nicer to live in, but it will do the same thing to your mind. And then time management. So plan your months, weeks, days, and hours deliberately and stick to it and say no to everything that isn't in the plan. And you have to be relentless with this. Will you upset some people? Yes. Will people think that you're not a nice person? Probably. Will people think, oh, that you should make exceptions? Yes. But do we care? No. Because, you know, the, the world around us, like most people in society, they're trying to pacify us. You know, they're trying to just numb our senses, and they're trying to make us feel for them and, and, and listen to them and hear their voices and all of this crap. And they're trying to make you behave and think like everyone else. They're basically just trying to pacify you and cut you down to size and make you fit in. And you can't have that. Because normal gets normal. And if you're, what you're pursuing isn't normal, then it's going to take abnormal to get abnormal. And so you have to not care about that and just stay true to your goal. And then you need to set goals. Always look at your vision and your mission, your annual goals, your monthly goals, and your war map action planner. And I'm going to show you these tools later in this module today. And then number 10, gratitude. 
So always looking to the future can cause fear and anxiety and stress, and you need to practice gratitude daily to balance yourself. Because if you're constantly looking out into the future and you're never grateful for anything you've got, and you're always what you start to get anxious and your you know your mind starts to worry. So you need to make sure that you do gratitude as well. You you should want things in the future. You should think out into the future, but you should also be grateful for things you've got now. And then number eleven, relentless persistence. So stick to your plan daily and never waver, despite emotion, drama, failure, or uncertainty. Come hell or high water, you have to stay on the rails and get it done. And I've included this uh, this sheet here in the resources section beneath this video. It's called Developing Self-Discipline. It's just a PDF that you can download and I recommend printing this thing out, putting it up on your wall, because remembering these things, you know, this is really, if you, no one in the world does these things perfectly all the time, but the people that do these things closest to perfection and the closest to all the time, they're the ones who win. So we're seeking perfection in all of these areas. So now let's talk about sacrifice and giving everything to win. So here's the thing nobody knows. Success equals sacrifice. And you can't have it all. And if you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want becomes the sacrifice. So how bad do you want it? Now people often talk a big game and say they're hungry, but as soon as you get them to sacrifice something they care about, they reveal their true character and their true priorities. You know, the best test I've got for people is just whether they will sacrifice something. And if they don't, then you know exactly where their priorities lie. But if they're willing to give up everything, you know where their priorities lie too. And sacrifice fuels the fire. So every time you sacrifice something, it's like taking that thing and all of your thoughts about it, all of the time that you spend on it, all of the time you spend thinking about it, and just throwing it onto a fire. And the energy from that thing makes the fire burn brighter. And that fire is your energy. You know, so if you're doing, if you're thinking about, caring about, and doing all of these different things, right? If you just start throwing them all onto the fire, you're just, you're gonna, your energy is gonna burn brighter and more intense. And winners, sell their souls so if you study the goats and that means greatest of all time g-o-a-t and what you'll see is that they've sacrificed massively to win and they give up everything they dedicated their entire being their entire existence to the relentless pursuit of the goal and me personally I gave up my social life, left my country and my friends, I don't drink or party at all, I don't have any hobbies, I don't really have any friends. I mean, I've got people that I'm friends with, but it's not like I have like an active social life with my friends all the time and we're texting and talking to each other. I don't have that. And every waking minute I have, I dedicate its full intensity to my work. And every dollar I have is invested in my business, and I truly am all in. Now, I do leave time. The only other place I have I have time is for my wife. And so I have all of Sunday blocked out, and that's her day. Don't do any work then. And then I also have, I work from 9 a.m. in the morning till 9 p.m. at night, Monday to Saturday, six days a week. And so after 9, I have time to spend with her too. But... Really, like between, you know, I'm, I'm not including wife and family in, in the sacrifice thing. But everything that isn't that has been sacrificed. And, you know, I don't have, I'm not like hedging my bets and putting money into other things. All my money's in my business. I'm all in. And so that's how intense my energy and focus is. So finding things to sacrifice. How do you find things that you can you know, chuck on the fire. Well, we want to use the 100 units of time 
exercise. And this is a powerful exercise I do monthly to see where my time goes. And here's how it works. For seven days, track what you do every 30 minutes, and you can do this by setting an alarm on your phone. You can just set it 30 minutes repeat, and that way it'll just start dinging, and then at that 30 minutes you can write down what you're doing. And then you want to write down what you're doing every 30 minutes, and you want to put it in a, into a journal. And do it every day for seven days straight. This isn't just work time. This is every single hour of the day. You're mapping 24 hours a day. Now, if you're asleep, then you just write sleep for those increments. But we're trying to track personal life, sleep, everything, where time goes completely. And at the end of seven days, categorize activities into buckets and then calculate how much time went into each bucket. So by buckets, I mean, you know, it might have been watching Netflix. Uh, even though you're watching different things on Netflix, you could probably just bucket those into one category called Netflix. Uh, and then if you're doing email, it doesn't matter if you're responding to different people via emails, you can just bucket that in. Uh, if you're creating content, you can bucket that into like content creation. So you're just creating these categories that you can put things in. And then calculate how much total time went into each bucket. So if you did, if you if you uh, watched four Netflix episodes and they were one hour each, then you'd create a, a bucket called like Netflix, then you would put all four in that and you'd say Netflix four hours, right? That's how it works. And then you're able to take a bird's eye view at where your time went over that seven day period. And you can see these, like where it all goes. And then sacrifice. So every activity that isn't related to your goal, eliminate it completely. And I don't care about your feelings. If you want to win, you'll get rid of it. So you might be attached to something like, oh, I can't get rid of that. I've watched that show forever. Oh, I can't get rid of that. Oh, I can't stop doing that. You know, I can, I can hear you saying this shit right now and of course you're attached to it of course you have feelings about it that's why you're addicted to it but you have to cut the cord and if you want to hang on to your little thing do it just know it'll cost you everything it's your choice i'm not forcing you to do it i'm just telling you what the truth is so that you can find out now instead of at the end of your life when you regret it and you might be saying, well, Sam, but I can't. And I can hear you saying it already, and it's bullshit. You can get rid of it. You just don't want to, and you're scared. And you've created a lie in your head that this thing is necessary, and that your business and you need it. The word you're probably saying is, I need it, Sam, I need it. You don't. And if you're saying, even my family, well, not your wife, family, or your health. You know, there's some things you don't want to sacrifice. You don't want to sacrifice sleep. You need at least seven hours a night. You don't sacrifice that. And you also need good food and exercise and meditation. You don't sacrifice those things because that's your health. And without your health, you don't exist. And so nothing else matters if you don't exist, right? So that's, that's number one priority. We don't sacrifice that. And then we also need, you know, a relationship in our family. Without that... You know, we, without that, then a very primal part of our brain will, won't be able to focus on, uh, on financial things and on a business and on future things because it's more concerned with its primal need right now. And you need a, a loving relationship because without these things, your limbic system will play havoc with you and harm your focus. But, you know, one thing that's that's kind of a bit hard to swallow for a lot of a lot of family people, is that a lot of the time they need to actually spend less time with their family to to really achieve the things that they want to achieve. And that's a place, that's a dark place some people don't want to go. But it's just the way it is. You know, I'm not saying you, you have to neglect your family. But, you know, there's some people who spend a ton of time with their family. Like, they're literally always doing something, dropping the kids off, picking them up, doing this project with them, going here, going on this trip over here. And it's like, it's it's really demanding. And if you want to do that, then that's cool, do it. But 
just know that you can't really do that and chase your vision if your vision's big. If your vision's small, then yeah, you can balance both. But if your vision's big and you think you can do both, then you're kind of lying to yourself. You know, and you need to just understand this and be real with it and, you know, take yourself to that dark place and face it honestly and make a proper decision about what you want to do. Now let's talk about focus and channeling energy into the grid. So here's pretty much how I operate as a system in a sheet in a, like a, in a, what do you call one of these, in a slide, like in a, in a diagram, kind of how I operate. So first of all, we've got like the fire, and that's the energy, right? And I need energy to do anything. Like if I don't eat anything, and if I don't sleep at all, then I'm not going to have any energy, and I'm not even really going to be able to talk, right? Let alone like move, let alone do anything like hard. So energy is important, and energy is the input that we can put into things. And to really get energy, I have my mission, my vision, mission, and principles. These things are great. It shows me what I want, what I care about, what I'm here to do, and what, what I'm actually doing. This is great. gives a lot of energy. Then clear goals and time management. So Stating exactly what your goals are for this year, this month, this week, today. Mapping out, like planning tomorrow today. Mapping out exactly what I'm going to do for all waking hours, when I'm going to go to sleep and all of that. That helps immensely too. And then self-awareness. So, you know, being aware of my baseline self, which we did in one of the previous modules in the Mindset Week. Like, who am I right now? What are my biases and tendencies and strengths and weaknesses? Being really aware of who I am right now and my baseline self. And then also being aware of the future self that I need to become so that I can achieve my mission, vision, and principles. So I'm constantly aware of these two things. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm regressing to baseline, or oh, I'm progressing towards goal. And I'm constantly optimizing things so that I don't regress to baseline. And if I do, I catch it as a warning flag. And if I do progress to goal... I start optimizing those variables to achieve that. And then self-discipline and control. You know, every day things are trying to get my attention. Honestly, just feel like that there's just a thousand leeches trying to latch on to me every day, all the time, and no matter how hard I try, they're still coming. And I really do police this well, so I don't know what normal people feel like, but normal people probably have like a million leeches trying to get on them. You know, people want to tell you their story. People want to talk to you. People want to, people want you to care about what they've got to say, and people want you to understand them. And you know, all of these people everywhere all want something. They're very needy. They want your time. They want your attention. They think they know what you should do. They've got all of this crap, and they're just trying to leech onto you. And the beauty of knowing your vision, mission, and principles, and your goals, and being self-aware, and knowing who you need to become. And is that you can really have the self-discipline to just ignore pretty much everything. So you just ignore it. And then if people do ask you, then you can just say no. And that's self-discipline and control. No, 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 no. I say it so often. I'm pretty much a no man. I say no more than yes. And then self uh, clean food and daily exercise. So if you eat bad food, then you'll probably have like one third as much energy as if you eat good food. Good food burns a cleaner flame and it's less chaotic. And that gives you, you know, more focus, more energy. And daily exercise does the same thing. It like kindles that flame. Meditation and mindfulness, this kindles that flame too. And then sacrifice. You know, I've just grabbed everything and thrown it on the fire. And that means that the fire is burning clean, it's burning strong, it's burning constantly and reliably, and it's producing a lot of heat. And I'm also all in financially. Everything I have is in my business. So I got that on the fire too. So it's burning red hot. And so that's how I'm getting energy. And then 
the, that's the input. Then there's the process that I'm you I'm processing that energy through myself. And process is you're really just channeling it. You know, you're you're basically controlling like a switch about where this energy gets distributed. And so I'm always trying to ask myself, what's the number one priority right now for me to achieve my long-term vision? And so I look at my vision, mission principles, I look at my goals and everything, and then I look at how much energy I've got to allocate, and then I look at where, like I scan my whole business and all the components of the business, and I find what the number one priority is to achieve that long-term vision, and then I lock onto that, like the Terminator just locking its gaze onto something. And then it's just in, submerged in it. It's like I don't even exist anymore. It's like my entire body and environment around me just just disappears. It's like I am in that computer. My existence has just morphed into that thing. And I will stay there in that zone until it's done. And then when it's done, I'll go back out. And then I scan again, running for the number one priority for the long term. Find it, lock, back in. Come back out, scanning, find it, lock, back in. Coming back out, scanning, finding, lock, back in. That's focus. And that's channeling that fire into the right places where it's going to get the most results. Now, it can be quite hard to channel and focus properly. So I do a lot of things that help me focus. And really the trick to focus is to think about what the opposite of focus is, and it's distraction. So if you don't do distraction, then you do focus. So I don't really try to focus, I try to not do distraction. And I just remove distractions and then focus becomes the default. So to do that, you want to remove all stimuli that isn't the thing. So, you know, don't have your phone out Turn it off, put it away. Don't have all this crap all over your desk. Don't have multiple screens. Don't don't sit in a place where you're going to, you know, get distracted. Don't have anything around you that's going to distract you. Remove all stimuli. And then any requests that aren't related to the main thing, say no and ignore them. And then the only time you're going to break your focus and deviate is if it's necessary for survival. So if something happens, you know, with your family and you have to deviate, then you've got to deviate. That's fine. If something happens, you know, if you need to look after yourself or your health or whatever, bam, that's fine. Deviate. And if your business, if something blows up and it's mission critical in the business, then it's fine. You have to break the focus and go look after it. But anything that isn't mission critical, you just leave it. Will people get pissed off? Yes. Will you upset some people? Yes. But that's what happens when you focus. That's the cost of focus. The, the winning, the, the win that you get from focus is, is amazing. It, it, nothing is better than it. But there is a small negative to focus, which is you piss a few people off because you just, you're not, you just disappear. And then outputs, they're the results. So when you when you get your energy and your when you really get your flame burning strong through sacrifice and self-discipline and meditation and goals and awareness and clean food and exercise and sleep when you really get that fire burning hot and then when you really get it channeled in and focused in on something specific then the output the results are intensely focused deliberate action and then completing things you know, completing things is important, shipping things, and then making progress and getting results. And so I'm channeling all of this energy into the grid, somewhere in this grid, wherever it's going to get the most output. And then there's feedback that comes out of that and comes back and feeds back into the flame, the input. So the feedback, I'm basically looking at, should I increase or decrease energy? and or focus on this thing that I'm working on. So if I'm working on this thing, and I keep burning energy into this thing, then I keep getting feedback, and as soon as the feedback comes back and says, this level of, this thing is now completed, I'm like, okay, well, new decision. Should I decrease my energy or focus? Should I, you know, should I 
This thing only needs a small amount of focus and energy now, and now the new place that needs my focus is over here. And then I'm also measuring results against baseline and goals. So, you know, I've got my mission, vision, principles, I've got my goals, I know what I'm supposed to do today, and I know my current self and future self, so I have a baseline, and I have a goal. A baseline is where I'm at now, currently. A goal is where I want to be, and as I burn energy into this thing, I'm constantly getting feedback, and I'm seeing, am I regressing to the baseline, or am I progressing to the goal, and I'm constantly reshuffling variables, reshuffling everything, so that I'm making progress as efficiently as possible towards the goal. And I'm also looking at the variable combinations, and whether they do or don't work. So, you know, if my current situation is that, uh, you know, I, if my current situation is that I am not getting enough customers, and my desired situation is that I want to get, you know, more customers, then I'm constantly shuffling variables. So I might be trying, you know, different types of Facebook ads, different types of, um, different types of landing pages and things. So I'm shuffling those variables around and I'm asking myself when I'm doing this, should I do more of this or less of that, more of this or less of that? And I'm optimizing for the most rapid progression towards the goal. Now this entire process which I run, in like I run this process 24 7 365, it's constantly scanning, it's constantly doing this. And these feedback loops are at the speed of light. It's just brrr, just going all the time. And really, what I'm this whole process would break down if number one, I didn't know what I was trying to do. I, I'm optimizing for a goal. And so if I didn't know, if I didn't have a goal, this whole process would just break. And so that's you need a goal. And the other thing is you need to know your baseline. Because if you don't know where you are, then you don't know whether you've made progress. Because you might be getting closer to your goal, but you don't even know where you were, so you can get anxious. So you need a baseline. You need a goal. And you need to constantly measure where you are all the time. And then this process will just, just go. This is the process. This is basically what I've trained myself to do you know, turn myself into like a learning and optimization machine that runs like this. Now, I included this as a pinup that's available in the resources section uh, beneath this video, so you can download it, pin it up on your wall, and it's called Feeding the Grid Pinup. And this is a good thing to remember for you. Like, you want to make sure you're managing and optimizing your inputs. You need that energy. Without that energy, everything breaks. Then you need to be managing and optimizing your your focus. Like, how tight is the focus? Where, where, what areas is it going into? And how are you choosing the areas in which it's going into? And then the outputs. What results are you getting? And then making adjustments through feedback. Do we do more of this, less of that? Do we optimize these variables or those variables? Like... How are you optimizing the system through its feedback loop? So now let's talk a little bit about focus specifically. I showed you the overall high level view of how the system works. But now let's talk about focus and channeling energy into the grid. So focus means to concentrate all available energy into a sharp central point. And the equation for focus is basically, you know, energy times focus equals results. So if you have, so let's say you have 10 energy units, and then let's say you don't have very good focus, you're kind of distracted. So then let's say focus is 1. So you get 10 times 1 equals 10. Now let's say you have the same energy units, 10, but you tighten your focus to 2. And then you have 10 times 2 equals 20. So focus is a multiplier. You know, focus is such a powerful tool. It's like a, it's like a superpower. Because you can take the same energy and just channel it and get exponentially more output. 
And what we're really trying to do is we're trying to f- optimize both. You know, we, this is when I when I do something, I'm going to really do it. I'm going to find every little piece that I can get, and I'm going to optimize the hell out of it and take it to the absolute knife's edge of the limit. And so I'm not just trying to play with this. I'm trying to play with both. I'm constantly thinking, how can I get more energy, cleaner energy? Just how can I optimize the hell out of this so I know that I've got max of this? That's meditation, uh, eating clean, exercising, all of that. And then focus. I'm trying to take this to the knife's edge as well. So imagine the average person has a five energy and a one focus. So they get a five. Then imagine I've got a 10 energy and a 10 focus. I get 100, right? That's 20 times. And that's probably accurate. I'd probably get 20 times the efficiency of a normal person. It might be a lot more. And it's just through mostly focus, but also energy. But focus is the main leverage point. And then it talks here about leverage. So focus, focus is a multiplier of energy and your major leverage point. And you can't leverage much with energy, but you can with focus. And what I mean here is you can only really like double or triple energy, right? Like if you can, if you eat better, you'll get more energy. If you sleep better, more energy. And if you exercise, more energy, meditate, more energy. And if you sacrifice things, way more energy. So you can really take energy up by maybe a factor of three. But focus has like a 10x, uh, a 10x, range so there's more leverage and focus and this is basically how it works just imagine your energy is the input flowing into this and then your focus is how you concentrate that energy and then your results are the output and that's the you know the the results you get from the focus multiplied by energy or energy multiplied by focus and so when you sacrifice things and eat clean you're getting more of this more flowing and then when you pro when you focus this in, you just multiply all of that, and your results are the are the output of this this multiplication. And so here's how it works. Remember, sacrificing, vision, mission principles, exercise, diet, meditation, self discipline, sacrifice. This fire is getting strong. Coming in here focusing, sharpening that point so that it's just piercing, and then woof, straight into the right part of the grid, boom, it lights up all the different components of the grid, getting feedback, measuring, and taking a position, measuring basically by comparing to baseline and goal. And I'm trying to progress towards goal and optimize variables and and uh, things to to progress to goal as efficiently as possible. Now let's talk about, you know, the grid. Because I keep saying focus energy into the grid. What do I mean by the grid? And what is this thing over here? It kind of looks like a grid with a power plant on it and some little thermometers. Well, here's what I mean by saying, you know, channel energy into your grid. So the grid. Imagine your business as an electric grid, a network of interconnected power providers and consumers that are connected by transmission and distribution lines and operated by control centers and control systems. So you imagine, you know, the United States, and it's got all of these different power plants, right? Some nuclear, some like hydro, some wind, some all sorts. And these different plants are producing energy. And then they're sending that energy through lines, you know, through power lines to other other distribution centers. And those other centers might store it or they might split it out into like a whole suburb or city. And they're controlling how it gets distributed throughout the whole grid to make sure that, you know, the lights stay on for everyone and it's used in the most efficient way possible. And so basically with our business, it's kind of the same. You know, if we think of our business as the whole, and it's got, it's the whole, it's the sum of its parts. And it has health, right? And the health, its health is the sum of its parts health. 
And so we're always trying to optimize where we put our energy into this grid so that the whole is as healthy as possible and it progresses towards its goal as efficiently as possible. And so we're trying to optimize for the whole. And how we optimize for the whole is we scan all of its parts and we know and we spot where we need it most. So if something is getting desperately low on energy and it needs it really bad, then we have to put our focus in here and power this thing back up and it ignites up and you know it helps the health of the whole. But sometimes we need to let energy get a little bit low in one area because we need what's most important for us is to channel a lot of energy in here. And by channeling a lot of energy in here, it subsequently ignites all this, all the rest of it and lights it all up. Because there's leverage points. You know, if you channel energy into this grid system, not all places give equal outputs. Output is not equal to input. You know, there's some places where you might put in 10 and get out zero. For example, social media, right? The output from input relationship with social media is fucking terrible. That's why I don't do it. I have to do a little bit because I tried to do nothing. I tried channeling zero energy into social media and I kept monitoring its output. And it had a few little glitches in it. Like people thought I wasn't real in things because they didn't do any of it. So then I was like, all right, well, let's channel a tiny bit of energy in here. Let's just do the bare minimum. And then I managed that output and I was like, all right, cool, that's good. That's where that thing should be balanced at. And then, you know, because I didn't channel so much energy into social media, I was able to channel more energy into product. So I was able to make a great product. Things that other people were like, how, does, how did he do that? This, they just don't know. I just sacrificed the things that they care about. You know, I wasn't doing the social media. I wasn't going and speaking at these events. I'm not watching Netflix. I'm not doing all of this other crap. And I don't have 10 businesses and, you know, I don't have five email addresses and I don't follow like 42 different people. So I can focus intense energy into places that are strategic within the grid so that I can get the maximum output and the most leverage. So this is where this equation gets really exponential. First of all, I'm optimizing energy input. I'm making sure that's way above the average person. Then I'm multiplying that by a factor of 10 by making sure that my channel and my focus is more intense than anyone else. So now I'm burning, you know, the bit like, I'm burning like five times as much energy with 10 times as much focus. I've got a massive advantage, like 50 to 100 times advantage already. But then I multiply that advantage again by channeling it into the best part of the grid. So I can figure out which one's going to get me the most output from the least input. And then I just unleash the energy into that part and it blows up. Then it times it by a factor of 10 again. So now we're going to have like 100 times 10. We've got 1,000 output. 1,000. And let's say the average person has a 1 energy and a 1 focus because they're so spread thin and so distracted and eating bad food and sleeping bad and, and on social media. So one energy, one focus, and then let's say they choose to put that into social media in the grid, and so they get a one multiplier. And so they've probably got a one output. But me, I got a 10 times a 10 times a 10. So I got a 1,000 output. Now we're at a 1,000x advantage. This is how it works. And the entrepreneur's job is to oversee, balance, and manage the health of the entire system, which is the business, the whole and all of its subsystems, which are its parts. So a business is the sum of its parts, and the parts are different pieces in the system. And, you know, these could be things like products, teams, departments, different processes, different softwares or systems. Uh, it could be customers, it could be prospects, could be marketing. There's all sorts of different things within a business. And, you know, it's the, the business is the sum of its parts. And what you're really trying to get good at, masterful entrepreneurs really get good at prioritizing and focusing. So masterful entrepreneurs learn how to rapidly scan the entire grid, 
check its health, and then allocate energy, which is basically time and money, where it's most useful to the overall system. And this requires rapid scanning abilities to check its health. It also requires really good, accurate, and fast, rapid prioritization. So you quickly see all of these things that you could do and people want you to do, and you very quickly choose what one to lock onto. And then once you've found that one thing to lock onto it, you just lock like a Terminator gaze, and then you focus on it and just unleash all of that potential energy through the, cha through the channel into the grid. And with prioritization, you're really trying to, number one, make sure that you ensure survival. So survival of yourself and also survival of your system, your business. That's number one priority. So if survival is ever at risk, you have to allocate energy there. That, that takes priority. But once you've got survival sorted, number two is achieving the vision and the mission. Knowing what that is and going like hell to get it. And so here you can understand it. We've got the energy inputs, trying to sacrifice things, eat clean, get more sleep. It's coming in, we're focusing, we're really choosing it, and we're really channeling it all into a, into a point. And then the output of this is really strong, powerful, focused energy. And we're putting this into the right spot in the grid at the right time. And when we focus it in here, we just charge it up, the whole grid lights up. And what we're constantly doing as we're channeling this energy into the grid is we're optimizing for our goals. Number one is to ensure survival. Once that's ticked off, then we go for achieving our vision and mission. And if we regress towards baseline, we optimize to not do that. And if we progress towards goal, we optimize to do more of that. We're basically doing more of what works, less of what doesn't. And we're mostly trying to achieve our vision and mission and the only time that priority changes is to ensure survival. That is the system. That is me and my brain and everything I do and think about, my entire, my entire being, this is what I do. 24 7, 3, 6, 5, I dream about this. I'm just going, scanning across everything. Thousands of variables just flicking between them in my mind and using different metrics and measuring sticks and time frames to understand where the health of these things sit. And then I'm looking at all of the different interconnections between all of these different things and how if one thing moves up, then it might move down over here. But if one thing moves up over here and 10 things move down over there, overall, it doesn't matter. We actually go up overall. So I'm not just, I'm not just being reactive to any spot that wants my help or any spot that might be getting down in energy. I'm not trying to make sure all of these thermometers uh, as are at are full all the time. Sometimes I learn that I can cut off whole things and get more. And sometimes I realize that I can sacrifice, you know, doing kind of shitty in a lot of areas to do really well in one, and that that one is more powerful than all of the others. So I'm constantly flicking through all of these scenarios and all of these situations. And I'm looking at the interconnections between the parts, ways to measure the parts, different inputs that could be applied to those parts to achieve different outputs and how those outputs would affect those different uh, inputs. And then I'm looking at different time horizons. I'm looking at short term, medium term, long term, and I'm flicking between those. And I'm flicking between all of these different things all the time. And then when I find one, I go lock. That's where it's going. Make sure that energy is constantly burning hot, focused. Get it done, back out, scan again. Find it, get it done, come back out, scan, back in. That's how you want to operate. And here is the, the diagram again. And I suggest you download this one. It's available for download in the resources section beneath this video. Download it, print it off, put it on your wall. And if you ever get stuck, I'll be like, oh, what should I do? Oh, what should I do? Should I go listen to a Gary Vee video? Or should I work on my business? Just, just look at this. Just try to optimize this, get more energy. Try to optimize this, get more focus. When you do that, you'll get more outputs. 
And then from those outputs, you'll get information and feedback and you can make adjustments to then further get more. And then you can just form an exponential, superhuman, alien-like machine. Now let's talk about consistency. Unwavering commitment to your goal. So this process seems pretty awesome, but how can it go wrong? Well, let's look at a few different scenarios here. Let's say, you know, success. How would we define success? Well, success is consistent progress towards the vision. Ultimate success would be the realization of the vision. But our visions are going to be so massive that we're just mostly making consistent progress towards the vision. That's success. So if we're making that, we're good. Stagnation, which isn't failure, but it also isn't success, is inconsistent progress towards vision. Maybe we're making some progress, then we fall back and get distracted. Some progress, fall back and get distracted. I mean, that's better than complete failure, but it's still not great. And then failure is no progress towards the vision. So we're not moving at all. Worse yet, we might be regressing from baseline. Worse yet, we might have quit and have ceased to exist. All right, so th that's failure. So these, this is very simple. How do you know if you're doing well? Well, you're making progress towards vision. How do you know if you're doing okay? Well, it's inconsistent, shaky progress towards vision. How do you know if you've failed? No progress or you've quit. And even if you've made no progress and you're still in the game, I mean, that's not good, but you're still alive and you just need to try to get up here. So really, the really the only thing that can go wrong with this is if you're inconsistent. If you get distracted or if you just forget what you're trying to do, then you're inconsistent. And consistency is really... Uh, the main thing once you've got that system operating because it doesn't matter if you can work insanely hard and be very focused for a short period of time that doesn't matter success is all about how consistent you are and system performance is the output and efficiency of your system over a long period of time so we would look at that performance equation like this we'd take your output and multiply it by time so let's say you output like 10 units of energy on a daily basis for a whole year. So that's output, 10 units, time, 365 days. So we get, you know, uh, 3,600. Then we're, we're dividing it by your input in time. So, you know, if your input is, let's say, a 5, and you get a 10 output because you multiply it by a 2 focus, times time, so then we'll just take 365, uh, multiply it by 5, and then we would get that, and we divide it by that, which means that, you know, that gives us our efficiency and our performance over time. This is also our consistency. And what's important about this equation is that you've got to understand that it's not just about output and input. It's mostly about time, right? People don't understand this. I, this is the whole launch model. This is why people that do launches just don't get it. Because they're like, you know, you see people all the time, they're like, oh, I got a 20,000% ROI on Facebook ads. And I'm like, oh, why aren't you a billionaire? And they're like, oh, because I stopped doing it. And I'm like, why the hell would you stop doing it? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And then someone might have done a launch three years ago and made a million dollars in in a week. And then you're like, well, how come you're poor now? And it's like, oh, because that was a year ago and I haven't done anything since, right? Time is the most powerful one. So if you just got a small income each day, if you just had a small output and a small input each day, but you had a long period of time, you would annihilate somebody who had a really massive output over a short period of time. So time is a very, very, very powerful part of the equation. You know, one of the reasons why my funnel in the, uh, the 2KA Automated Consulting Accelerator Automated Webinar Funnel, the main reason why that thing crushes is because that sucker is consistent. 
it works like a dog 24 7 365 you know we're advertising in all of these different countries all over the world all the time so a customer is buying consulting accelerator pretty much every 20 minutes even all through the night even on saturdays even on sundays even on christmas so it's not like it's doing these miracle these miracle spikes like launches do the thing is just consistent as hell and that's what really makes the output so high is cuz sure it's great with its output and but people make way more than that doing a live webinar one off or speaking on a stage one off but it's mostly about the time this thing's doing it every day consistently so that's why consistency is so important and to to really be consistent you can never deviate and the number one reason for failure and inconsistency is forgetting the vision mission and goal if you forget why you're in business and why you exist you're going to be inconsistent because you now you've gotten lost you're going to now be choosing any action and anything because you have no idea why you're just kind of doing it on a whim and it's making no sense so the number one reason for failure and inconsistency is forgetting the vision, mission, and goal. Never, ever, ever waver. Never forget. And how do you stay consistent? Well, don't forget the goal and keep tracking performance against baseline and towards goal. So it's very important to always keep a baseline, always keep a goal, and always keep measuring and never take your eye off the ball. And keep optimizing your inputs in the system and measuring their effect to the output in pursuit of the goal and perfection. So always optimizing. You know, it's not enough to just keep in mind the goal, have a baseline, and to measure. You also have to channel energy through, and you have to optimize variables, feed it back around, and keep going. And do it consistently, relentlessly, over a long period of time. So main failure reasons are people forgetting the goal, people getting distracted, people varying their inputs. So, you know, they they forget that inputs are important, so they just decide to, you know, they forget that sacrifice helped them, so they decide to start taking more things on. Oh, yeah, cool, I'll do this hobby. Oh, yeah, I'll learn to do this, I'll learn to do that, I'll play the piano, I'll do all of this crap. You know, it's funny, I... When I first started making money, I just started taking up all of these hobbies. I was like, oh, I'm going to get a helicopter license. That'll be fun. So cool, I'll do that. Started uh, practicing for that. And then I was like, oh, I've always wanted to play the piano. So I bought a piano. And then, you know, I thought I'd start doing that. I was like, oh, I want to learn the guitar too. So I bought a guitar and some books on how to do that. And then I thought, yeah, in a boat, because I'd like to go fishing. So I got a boat. And then I had two nice cars. And then, you know, I had to look after the cars, look after the boat and all the maintenance related to those things. Then to also get any enjoyment or use out of the car or the boat, I had to use the boat. And then using the boat was more energy going into it. And then driving the cars, more energy into it. And then, you know, I would try to learn how to play piano, more energy, try to learn to play the guitar, more energy. And then I'd also have to look after and manage and upkeep the guitar and the piano. And then I also... Uh, you know, the helicopter thing was just insane. I can't believe I was that dumb. Very quickly, I realized that I couldn't achieve any one of these things without sacrificing all of the others. And so when I had this realization, I was just like, do I want to learn piano more than I want to succeed in business? No. Piano has gone. Do I want to learn guitar more than I want to win, succeed in business? No. Do I want to drive around on a boat more than I want to succeed in business? No. I was like 24 at the time. I was like, dude, you can do that when you're retired. You're 24. You don't need to just cruise around like, you know, a seven-year-old dude in a, in a boat. So I got rid of the boat. Do I need to drive around in a car and look rich? No. It'd be better to just be rich and not have to not have to tell anyone about it and be really rich and then have no one know and then that would be pretty cool so i got rid of everything 
And so, you know, another way you can lose is by varying your inputs. So forgetting the things that you sac forgetting that sacrifice helps. You know, if you look at any of the best athletes in the world, they do massive sacrifice. They do it as a routine. Uh, I was looking at a Michael Jordan documentary, and when he got to a point in his career where he got very distracted, he realized that he was just doing too much. You know, he had said he'd be in the Olympics for basketball. He was also doing all of these ad campaigns and promotions and sponsorships and all of these public appearances. And he asked himself the question, he was like, are these things more important than winning the game? And he was like, no, these are, these are byproducts of being the best. And if I get so distracted on these things, then I'll be focusing on these byproducts instead of what created them. And then I'll forget what created them, start losing there, and then I'll lose the byproducts too. So he just cancelled everything locked the windows, closed the doors, stopped doing sponsorships, stopped doing everything and just went back to the game and dominated. And you can also, if you take your eyes off the metrics, then that's another way. Stop measuring things, that's another way. Uh, stop taking baselines. And stop scanning the grid, stop looking at the function of the outputs, and basically accepting entropy, you know, accepting that things are just going to be inefficient and accepting that things aren't going to grow or are going to go backwards and regress a little. And really, it's always avoidable if you keep your eye on the ball 24-7, 365, you remember your vision, mission and your goal, you keep a baseline, you measure things and you never take your eye off the ball and you're relentless in your pursuit and you stay consistent and you don't waver for a second. Now let's talk about some systems and tools so that you can stay on the rails. So once we're on the railroad towards our vision and mission, we don't want to deviate. And when we're starting to optimize our inputs and burn a clean uh, fire of energy, and once we're channeling it and focusing it really well, and once we're getting good outputs and choosing the right places to channel that energy and we're growing that business towards its goal and we're getting feedback all the time and we're constantly adjusting and making things more efficient, once we're doing this, we're on the railroad towards our vision and mission and we just don't want to get off. We don't want to deviate. That's the only thing that can really happen at this point is you just somehow get off the rails. You've got to stay on the rails. And to stay on the rails, we need metrics, controls, and observers to monitor those metrics and those controls. Because it's all good. If you don't have any metrics and controls, then you're screwed. Because you, you don't know what you're measuring. You don't even know what's going on. You know, it's like trying to observe the temperature of the air. You can't do that. You can't look with your eyes at the air and be like, I wonder if it looks hot or cold. You've got no idea. So you need a metric. You need a thermometer and you need a measuring stick to measure it. You need controls. You know, controls are things that you can do to adjust it. So having some air conditioning or opening the window to adjust the temperature. You know, if you don't have the option to open a window or turn on a heater or put on some air conditioning, it doesn't matter if you've got metrics. Because now the, now the temperature of the air is just very hot or very cold and there's nothing you can do about it. So you need metrics to know the temperature of the air in the room. You need controls to be able to change the temperature of the air in the room to bring it towards where you want it to be. And you need observers to actually monitor those metrics and those controls. Because if you have the ability to open or close a door, turn on a heater or an air conditioning system, that's your control. If you've got a thermometer with an accurate read of the temperature of the room, then you've got a metric. You've got metrics and controls. But if no human is there to watch those things and do something about it, it's useless. That's why you need that human observer to monitor things. So here's the systems and tools that I use and that you should use too so that you can stay on the rails and get your vision and mission.
So first and foremost, vision, mission, and principles. Do these, make them clear, and keep them handy and look at them multiple times a day, every day. You will forget. You're extremely forgetful. You're a human. So look at it multiple times a day, every day. Remind yourself of why you exist and what you're actually doing. And then baseline self and future self. So keep your alchemy of self workbook handy and look at it every day. We did this in the previous modules in week two. Sorry, not week two, uh, in week seven, mindset training and up level. Keep this handy. You want to see who you are now so that you can understand your baseline, who you want to be so that you can achieve your vision, mission, and principles, and tracking all of that so that you're growing your character. And you've, you've got your true north, that's your vision, mission, principles, and you're growing your character, and then you need self-discipline. So keep your inputs consistent. Eat consistent food. If you, if you vary your diet all the time, you'll vary your output. And if you vary your output, you'll vary everything. Exercise, keep it consistent. Hydration, sleep, meditation, behavior, keep it all consistent. Now here's an awesome tool that I use. It's called an Aura Ring, O-U-R-A. And use this ring to track your sleep quality and bed and wake times. And you can go to consulting.com forward slash Aura. That's consulting.com forward slash O-U-R-A. The URL's on the screen. And if you go here, you can see this ring. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. It's a small little ring. And it tracks your sleep. So it tracks the time you go to sleep, the time you wake up, and your heart rate and everything. You can see it's a tiny little ring and it's got these little readers inside it. And it's honestly amazing. Like it works really well. And let me see if I can show you the metrics that it shows you. So it shows you, you know, sleep trends and all of this, your REM sleep, deep and everything. Uh, it shows you how your heart rate and your body temperature and your respiratory rate. It shows you activity. It shows you all sorts of things and it has an app. It's honestly amazing. What it really does is it provides you with a metric and a feedback mechanism so that you can optimize your sleep. Because most humans don't have a measurement for sleep nor do they have any feedback mechanism for sleep. So they're not able to optimize the inputs that go into optimizing a good sleep. So they just end up with an unmeasured, unregulated, unchecked, unoptimized, chaotic, shitty system. All right? You want to have a good one. So go to that URL, and the one I have, it's called a balance. So you can go choose balance, choose your color. I'm pretty sure I just have this color here, this one. So it's just a balance ring, and it's the silver color, and the total price is $299. You do not need the $1,000 one with these shitty diamonds on it. You just need the $299 one. Choose silver, and then you choose your ring size. You probably need to get a, a sizing kit. Uh, they send you out a sizing kit. You can find your size, and then you can order it. Uh, and then it's $299, and then you get the app on your phone, and it is 100% worth it. It'll change your life. Get it. Then a health tracking sheet. So you want to use this sheet to track your daily health inputs. And it's available for download in the resources section beneath this video. It's just called health tracking sheet. And what you can do is you can download it. Uh, it will be an Excel file. And... I recommend that you don't use the Excel file, and what you do instead is you just click this link up the top right and open it up using Google Docs, Google Sheets. And then what you can do is you can just go File, Make a Copy, Save it to your own drive. Now here's how the sheet works. On the dashboard, we have a bird's eye view of our average for the month, for each month. So we can see how we're trending month to month and how we're trending overall at an annual level. And then these different tabs are used to measure the daily inputs for uh, these different metrics. 
So we're, in this column here, we've got our date, and it shows us you know, the date and what day it was. And then we have sleep S. So sleep S is sleep start. What time did you fall asleep? Your aura ring will tell you that. And you want to set your goal, like when do you want to go to bed by? I'm supposed to be asleep by 11. So I'm supposed to fall asleep any time in between 10.30 and 11. All right? So I can track that. Sleep start, sleep end. That's when I actually woke up. And the aura ring will track this stuff when you actually fell asleep and when you actually woke up. So, you know, a human might say, oh, I went to bed at 10 o'clock and I woke up at this time, but they might not have fallen asleep till 12. That means that you didn't fall asleep till 12. This is actual sleep start, sleep end. Then it will cal auto-calculate sleep duration for you. That's the total amount of hours that you were asleep. And what's awesome about this is it will show you at day-to-day. -day. Down here, it will show you the month. On a monthly basis, you should be averaging eight, eight hours. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, you should be hovering in between seven and nine. Seven and nine, if you hover between those, then on a monthly average, you'll be at eight. If your monthly average is lower than a seven, it's getting sketchy. And then we've got awake time. That will be auto-calculated by the aura ring. Like how many minutes were you awake during your sleep? Then light sleep. How many hours or minutes were you, were you light? Uh, and then REM. How many hours or minutes were you in rapid eye movement? And then how much was deep? This will all get from your aura ring and plug it in here. What was your heart rate? LRHR um, as a percentage. And then what was this as a time? And then you can uh, read this up here. It talks about what it is. And then your body temperature. And then your uh, RR, which is like resting heart rate, I'm pretty sure. HRV. Right, all of these metrics, you just get these straight from the Aura Ring. Plug them in. Your readiness, this is a score that the Aura Ring gives you, and it shows you how good you should be feeling. You want your readiness to always be above 80. If your readiness is below 80, you're doing something wrong. If your readiness is in the 90s, you're doing something very right. Your sleep score should also be above 80. Now, these three inputs... Alertness, mood, and soreness, we manually input ourselves. So every morning, when I fill out the sheet at roughly 9 a.m. every morning, I ask myself, like, how alert am I feeling today? And I just put in 100 is perfect. And I put in how alert I'm feeling, what my mood's like. If I'm feeling grumpy or moody or angry or sad, it would be lower. If I'm feeling great, it's 100. My soreness. Like, if I've been training and my legs and arms are extremely sore, then I'd put in, like, a 50. If I'm feeling perfect, I'd put in 100. Then my meditation time. How long did I meditate for today? I do it 20 minutes a day, every day, religiously. Did I look at my mindset, vision, mission, and principles, and goals, and everything today? Yes or no? Why yes or you know? Then diet. So... If I eat clean, that means full clean, no snacks, no sugar, nothing that's out of the plan. It's just clean, lean food. If I eat totally clean for the day, then it's a one. If I eat clean but I have a snack or something that is, isn't in the diet, then that's a two. And if I kind of completely botch it and I like have like some ice cream or I have a meal that wasn't in the plan, uh, then I will put it as a three, right? And then what I'm doing here is I'm want, trying to get as much ones as possible. And that means that if the if I'm get, like 30 is perfection for the month, and like a 90 would be you're, you're totally fucking it up for the month. And then what's cool is the year view you know, you can see how clean your diet is month to month and how clean your diet is yearly. And then you can see how good your heart rate is yearly, how much REM you're getting on a yearly basis and what your average sleep time and wake time is and sleep duration is on an annual basis. 
No one has this insight. This this is this is like no one has this shit. Most people don't even know what fucking time they go to bed. They don't know what time they wake up. They have no idea what they eat. They're basically just a walking zombie with no awareness of anything. And if they do think they're aware, mostly they're delusional. Because they're not aware, but they think they are. Which is a dangerous thing. So by doing this, you get real data, and you treat yourself like a machine. You know? And this is how you get discipline. This is how you stay on the rails, and this is how... People start calling you an alien or something because they just don't know how the hell it works. And then supplements. If you, if I have my supplements for the day, then I put that as a one. If I forget and I don't, I put that as a zero. So it's zero or one, binary state. Workout. Do Did I work out today or not? Yes or no? Then what time did I start work? Work yes. I'm supposed to start at 9 a.m. You should have a target start time. What time did I finish work? I finished at 9.30. And I finish work in between 9 and 9.30 every day. That's my target end time. Work duration. Well, that would be 12 and a half hours. Work output. So I put this in myself. How much do I, like, how good was my output for the day, do I think? 100% is great. 0% is basically forgot to do anything and stayed in bed and just watched Netflix for the day. Right? That's output. And then focus is how how good was I with focusing on things and not getting distracted? 100 is great. And then did I plan tomorrow today? Plan TT? Yes or no? Then reading. Did I read? Like, I usually what I do is I read from about 9 to 10.30. And I say yes or no. And then it's audited. So I have Rhett come in and check every single entry here to make sure these are accurate, to make sure he's seen these observations and that it gets done every day and there's no missing data. So Rhett checks this daily and he signs Rhett. And then if there's any notes I want to put in, I'll put notes. Like if I'm sick, I've got the flu or whatever, put them in here. And you want to do this every day. And you want to track these things every day. Because then you can see trends. You might think, oh man, that week that I, like that week, two weeks ago, I was so productive then. How come I can't do that again? Well, you can. You just got to know what happened that week. What were the ingredients of that week? So if I had a week that was just on fire, I'll trace it back and I'll be like, all right, what was going on in this week? Oh, I see. Well, I got way more sleep, my heart rate was way lower, I was exercising more, my meditation was consistent, and my diet was clean. So of course my output was going to be great. If my inputs were great, my output's going to be great. But then if I have a really shitty week, and I'm like, man, this week just sucked. I wonder what it was. And that's what most people do. Oh, maybe, you know, just, maybe it was the planetary alignments or something you know or maybe it was just a thing maybe it was just just a glitch right this is the sort of shit people do when they don't have any information instead you come here and you're like why were my outputs shit okay oh it's because i haven't been getting any sleep oh would you look at that my heart rate's through the roof and yeah my readiness is really bad and my mood's all over the place i've totally forgotten to do my meditation my diet has gone to shit and I'm just eating basically fast food. I forgot to take any supplements and I didn't work out a single day. Oh, no wonder my output's bad. Outputs create Outputs are derived from inputs. Garbage in, garbage out. Put shitty things in, get shitty things out. Ain't any magic here. This deciphers the whole roller coaster ride of being an entrepreneur. It deciphers the code and it finds out what the fuck's going on. And it allows you to change things and play with things. You know, if there's a variable in here that you want to change, you look at its inputs. Oh, I want to get my sleep time, sleep duration longer. How would I do that? Oh, I could sleep a bit longer in the morning or I could go to bed a bit earlier at night. You know what to do. You see the metric, you pull it into shape by adjusting its inputs, and if it has the desired effect, you turn it into your new mode of operation. And when you find a good mode of operation, you stay, 
you stick to it. And that's why I have Rhett. He's a live-in personal trainer who watches me and watches all of my inputs and outputs every day to make sure that I don't go off the rails. Because the other danger is, even if you have all of these metrics, you might forget to input them. Or yeah, that's going to be an accident. But also, you might input them, but you might lie. And you might not even know you're lying. So having someone make sure it gets done and then fact checks it and he's like, hey, you didn't really do that, checks it. And then if you start trending in a negative way and regressing from baseline, that observer will pull you into shape. Be like, hey, dude, you need to fix this. Look, look where this is going. All right? That's why I have a third party external objective observer for that. So that's the health tracking sheet. Use it. It's good. Warm app calendar. So use this to plan your years, your months, your weeks, your days, and your hours. And it's available for download in the resources section beneath this video. And I'm going to open it up using Microsoft Excel. I suggest you click this blue link up the top. Open it in Google Docs. It's way better in Docs. Use it there. Then you can just go file, make a copy, save it to your system. And here we've got, I've explained this before in another video, so I'm not going to do it too long. Here we plan our high-level view. So we plot different things. Maybe we've got some different vacations, some live events, whatever we plot these in. We use a color-coded scheme to pull this off. Then we drill into the specific months. And here we just state what we're going to be doing each day. Right? What are we going to be doing each day? And we can plan our month in advance. We can put down here our main objectives. And you know, we want to start by plotting our objectives here and then reverse engineering them from, all right, if I want to achieve this this month, then I need to do this this week and this this week and this this week to achieve this. You start at the end and you reverse engineer back to the week, back to the day, back to the hour, back to the minute, and then you execute. And then you stay to the, stick to the plan. That's how it works. And yeah, I use this religiously every day. So I'm using my health tracking sheet and I'm using my warm app calendar and I'm looking at these things all the time. And you want to save them, bookmark them. You can see here, my warm app calendar is, is in my bookmarks bar and my health tracking sheet is here too, right? So they're all ready to go, like quick access. So use the warm-up calendar. And then another one is the RICE prioritization tool. And you want to use this tool to prioritize the order of project execution. And this is available for download in the resources section beneath this video. This is an Excel file. Open it up using Microsoft Excel. Then click this blue link to open it inside Google Docs. And here is a tool for really prioritizing because if we go back to this if, let me go to um, back to this right we have where was it yeah prioritize and focus so you know really masterful entrepreneurs they're rapidly scanning this thing and choosing which place to channel their energy so that they can channel it into the place that's going to get the most exponential output. This tool helps you do that. You state the different projects. So let's say there's all of these different things you could do in your business that could help you progress. You write them all down, different projects. Then you put in like reach. So how many customers will this project impact over a single quarter? So over 90 days, well, actually a quarter... Yeah, quarters, 90 days. Uh, how many customers could this uh, potentially reach? Put it in, and it's a guess. Then impact. So how much will this project increase conversion rate when a customer encounters it? Is it massive, high, medium, low? You put in this multiplier. So put in the force multiplier. Then confidence. So how confident are you about this, about this uh, estimate? High, low, medium, so it's confidence thing. Effort. Estimate the total amount of time that it will require you or your team to do it. So, you know, these are person months. 
So if it's going to take you one month with one person, that's one. If it takes two people one month, that's two. If it takes one person uh, two weeks, that's 0.5. And then you get your rice score. And your rice score is basically uh, an algorithm that's using you know these. So we're looking for something that's going to reach the most people with the highest impact, with the highest confidence, with the least effort. That's its secret source. So here you can see this function. And we're basically looking for highest impact with the greatest reach, with the highest confidence, with the minimal effort. Whatever that is, that is what we should do. So then we scan through error and we find the thing with the highest rice score, 9,000. And this says new webinar. And it's because it has a 2,000 reach, a 3 impact, a 75 confidence, a 0 0.5 effort. So yeah, this has got massive power, very high confidence, and low input. So high output, low input. That equals an exponential you know, function. So this is going to take priority number one. And I'm going to do that immediately. So remember back here, scanning the grid, trying to find it, trying to find it, trying to find it. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to find the thing that I can do, I can channel my energy into and get the most out of it. And it's measured according to my long-term vision mission principles. And so I'm getting this energy, channeling it and prioritizing the number one priority using that rice scoring tool. Find the thing, lock, terminate a gaze on that thing, just energy going into it, done, next. Scan the grid again, find out where I should spend my time, make a decision, lock, straight in. Constantly doing this, 24-7-365, never ends. So that's the Rice Project Scoring Tool. Download it, save it to your drive, bookmark it with your other tools, use it. And then standardized metrics. So use key metrics to measure your business outputs. For example, you need to be measuring how much money you're making, how much profit you're making, what your profit margin is, what your growth is, what's your growth month over month, what's your growth quarter over quarter, what's your growth year over year. Know these things. Know your baseline, know your targets, and know whether you're regressing or progressing. And keep these metrics standardized. Because if you keep changing your metrics, then you keep changing your measurements. So have some key metrics that you use. And, you know, I gave you some of those in the health tracking sheet for you uh, to use. And throughout this training, I've given you good ones for measuring your funnels performance, your ads performance, your sales calls performance, all sorts of stuff. And then a third-party observer. So if you're feeling extreme then get a live-in coach and trainer to observe you and keep you focused. That's what I did with Rhett. Rhett lives in my house, and he works with me every day, and he sets my diet. He monitors the, he manages the chef who buys the groceries and cooks the food that I eat. So he monitors what I'm eating, when I'm eating it, and he also monitors that I don't go off and eat other things, and he makes sure that I go to sleep and that I wake up at the right times, that I meditate, that I also exercise right, and I log all of my metrics, and he's constantly acting as that third-party observer. Because remember I said you've got, let's say your vision is to get the temperature of the room up to a high temperature. All right, let's say that's it. Now your tools, you've got to have a you've got to have a metric, first of all. You've got to have a thermometer that can accurately read and gauge the temperature of that room. Bam, got that. Then you've got to have some controls, so some ways that you can actually change the temperature of that room, make it hotter or cotter. So air conditioning, window, heater, right? So that's good. Then I need an observer to make sure that you know I'm controlling the, the metrics and controls in the right way. So I'm basically playing with the controls and the metrics, and Rhett's standing behind me to make sure that I don't get delusional and I don't get distracted, and I don't go off the rails, or I don't start changing inputs into my own human body that make me start to get emotional and bring that emotion into my work and start screwing with things and blowing things up. That's why I got a third-party observer. 
Now, it's not 100% necessary. Pretty much none of this is necessary. But this is about going to that next level. And if you want to go to that next level, you've got to get extreme. And remember, success is the sum of your human will. Your will to win, your will to prepare, and your will to relentlessly pursue in the face of anything. So let's go get it.